The world's had a few updates lately. Pandemics, energy shocks, the occasional tank cameo. It all keeps glitching. So what's next? Another blackout? Energy rationing? Maybe just the usual alien invasion? Or zombies slowing down your morning commute? If you can keep your lights on through that chaos, you'll be able to handle blackouts, fuel hiccups, and monster energy bills, no problem. No bunkers, no fear. You'll learn how to black start your home, power it from your car, and heat with 1,000% efficiency. Yes, really. Let's start with how to make your home harder to knock offline. If you've got power, you've got options. Cooking, cleaning, hot showers, even purifying your water if things get a bit murky. But you can't count on stable gas lines forever. 2022 proved that when Russian gas vanished and prices went thermonuclear. It's, it's happening and it will increase prices and prices will be paid by consumers. So we're electrifying your lair with a home battery system trick even the apocalypse can't kill. Systems begin around five kilowatt hours of storage and cost around 7K, but can stack up to 50 kilowatt hours of storage. Now, five kilowatt hours of storage is enough to top up on cheap nighttime power and slay those killer zombie bills that keep coming back. And also just enough to ride out a short blackout, but only if you spring out for the extra gateway or backup switch. The bit of kit that isolates you from the grid and keeps the house alive when the street goes dark. Skip it, and when the grid ghosts you, so do your lights. Now, you won't be able to power everything in your home as the battery's power output is capped by the inverter size. And most domestic rigs top out around seven kilowatts of power, just enough for basic home comforts, but not full power palace. Meet the latest battery flex, the Tesla Powerwall 3. It has 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage and up to 11 kilowatts of continuous power output. Enough to run a normal house and then some. Stack a few of these and you're looking at serious resilience, up to 95 kilowatt hours of storage and 44 kilowatts of power output potential. Enough power to spark a whole new civilization. But heads up, while they're great for blackout backup and everyday energy management, they're not what's known as black start capable. And if you want to move from thunderstorm ready to apocalypse bougie, here's where it gets spicy. Most batteries are grid followers. Obedient little ducklings that stop quacking once the grid goes dark. Drain them to zero and your solar panels will just stare at the sunrise like teenagers without Wi-Fi. Basically, there's no spark left to kick your system back into life. For real independence, you need true islanding ability in your home. That's gear that can literally spin up its own little micro grid from scratch. So even if you've gone flat, the moment the sun comes back or you fire up another power source, the system can wake itself and start recharging. Look for hybrid inverters with black star and grid forming chops like the Victron Quattro, Fronius Gen 24 Plus, or the Sunsync hybrid line. Want to flex full end of days nerd mode? We went to see the UK's first SciGen stack from Sig Energy. Now we saw this at Artisan Electric's base camp. Check out their YouTube channel. Just one of their inverters can push out 250 kilowatts of power, and the whole thing can scale to literally megawatt hours. And of course, it's black start capable, so it can boot your microgrid from dead. That's not backup, that's Bond villain data center. The thing is, the apocalypse might be fiction, but the need for this stuff isn't. Because in the future, energy is money, and your car's the wallet. <laughs> To make sure you can still get around if the fuel supply to gas stations gets cut short, like the great 2021 fuel crisis, you'll want to drive electric into the sunset. Go! You sure? Yeah. Pick an EV with vehicle to home or vehicle to grid capability and suddenly your car isn't just transport, it's a rolling power bank on wheels. You can top up your house, your neighbor's house, or even barter electrons for tins of beans if things get really mad maxi. Because when the pumps run dry, volts become currency. Japan's been quietly running homes off EVs for years, and Europe should catch up in 2026 as bi-directional standards 
and plug-in and charge tech modules. And this isn't small potatoes. The Tesla Cybertruck packs 120 kilowatt hours, but also has the added benefit of a stainless steel exoskeleton and so-called armor glass. Perfect if the local undead start window shopping. Some big pickups in SUVs, like the GMC Hummer and the Rivian R1T with Max Pack, carry up to 200 kilowatt hours. That's basically a fortnight of whole house power at 14 kilowatt hours a day. Your car could keep the kettle boiling long after civilization conks out. Yeah. Once you've banked some serious juice, the next move is to spend it like your life depends on it. Because in a true grid gone ghost scenario, it might. First reality check, your shiny new batteries will not run a gas boiler. And when energy isn't on tap, every watt matters. So you're gonna need a heating system that sips electrons, not sucks them like an energy hungry vampire. Here's a plot twist. You're already part of a national prep plan. You just didn't know it involved heat pumps. Heating and cooling usually swallow up about half of a home's annual energy needs. And as we saw when gas prices went stratospheric in 2022, relying on fossil flames is both expensive and fragile. Even at their best, gas boilers top out around 85% efficiency, basically burning cash. Cue the heat pump power up. These things aren't just efficient, they're cheat codes. A well-installed modern unit is 300 to 500% efficient pulling most of its heat for free from the outside air. This slashes your heating power demand from 50% of your home's energy down to just 15 to 25% for the same comfort, meaning your precious battery stash can go to more important things like cooking, cleaning, chainsawing your way through an alien zombie siege. And there's a financial jump scare in your favor. While the boiler upgrade scheme is still alive in the UK, you can slice seven and a half grand off the installation cost. And by visiting heatgeek.com, you could land a high performance system for as little as two and a half K. Apocalypse or not, that is a killer ROI. Here's Johnny. Pro prepper tip, crank that efficiency slider all the way over to max if you're bracing for Hello. alien landings, or sit at around 340% if you just wanna zap gas bills. Bonus, heat pumps cool too. So if the climate does go into a runaway carbon feedback loop, permafrost burps methane, oceans belch hydrates, soils exhale CO2, at least your living room stays chill while the planet panics. Note, cooling only works with air to water heat pumps well if you upgrade to underfloor heating or fan assisted convector radiators, like Jaeger's stealthy high output rads. Basically, these are radiators with tiny fans built in. To summarize, better emitters give you higher efficiency, which give you a longer battery life. And if the undead do turn up, at least your floors will be toasty while you hold the line. Extra apocalypse insurance. Even with all that tech, nothing beats a good old wood or multi-fuel stove as fallback. Get one big enough to burn for hours, or hypothetically, to fit infected family members. Excuse me and make sure it's the seal type with an external air intake. Basically a duct that drags in air from the outside. Much more efficient than sucking cold drafts through your fortress tight house. <coughs> of course, you wanna start with the obvious armor. Loft insulation, air tightness, draft proofing. It's the same move whether you're talking nuclear winter or planetary bake off. Keep warmth in when it's freezing and keep heat out when Earth goes full oven. Here's where you can level up from basic insulate and pray to climate Jedi. Breeze Soleil on your south side. A fancy French way of saying nerd level shade upgrade. They let low winter sun stream in and warm your home for free when it's cold, then block harsh summer rays so your heat pump doesn't have to run in reverse just to keep you cool. Passive cooling, free efficiency. Internal shutters. Beautiful, cozy, and surprisingly effective. They cut drafts, slash window heat loss, helps dampen the noise of screens for help from your neighbors, and double up as stylish sun shields. Just be warned, zombie resistance rating, zero. <laughs> Nuclear blast protection, also zero. If you do want to go full end boss fortress, you're gonna need external stainless steel shutters. Less architectural digest, more fallout bunker. If the grid goes down and stays down, you're gonna need to roll your own electrons. 
Generators are the old school play. Petrol or diesel will keep the lights on and batteries topped up, but fuel won't be guaranteed when everyone's panic siphoning jerry cans. Solar is the obvious first wave. Cover the roof, but don't stop there. Throw panels on the shed, pergola, even your fences. Yes, solar fence panels are a real thing. If the sky ever does turn smoky, volcanoes, wildfires, or worse, your output can drop by half. So more panels, more margin. And keep an eye on perovskite tech. Lighter, flexible, and cheap enough to slap up fast once it's mainstream. Apocalypse meets Moore's Law. But when the sun clocks out, the comeback kid rolls in. Small wind. And this time, it actually works. Modern micro turbines aren't the roof rattling disappointments they used to be. Smarter blade profiles, stronger gearboxes, and more realistic performance curves mean they actually work now, if you've got wind worth catching. With a good open sight, a few kilowatts can trickle charge batteries all night while your solar's dormant. Or there's micro hydro. Living near running water is basically the ultimate off-grid cheat code. 24 seven generation while everyone else prays for the sun. You can even hack one together for yourself. Muscle power, low output, but bulletproof. Hand crank chargers, bike generators, even pedal power washing machines. Mad Max meets Peloton. Other nerd level backups are biomass gasifiers, which essentially turn wood or pellets into fuel gas for a generator. Thermoelectric wood stoves turn your fire's heat straight into electricity. Or propane standby generators. Propane keeps forever, unlike petrol. Pro tip, tie everything into your battery system with a proper hybrid inverter. That way, PV, wind, hydro generator, all speak the same language and you're not cobbling together a Frankenstein grid. This isn't just prepping, what we're building here is the next grid. Once homes can make, store and share their own energy, every battery, every EV, every heat pump becomes a node in a distributed power network. When you can black start your home, you're not just surviving the apocalypse, you're quietly replacing the national grid, one inverter at a time. Next up, how to make your home safer than the space station. If you've gone full fortress, sealed the leaks, packed in insulation, draft proofed every nook, congrats on the heat retention, but now your house can't breathe, and neither can you. Crack a window and you'll dump all that precious apocalypse hoarded warmth straight out. Enter MVHR, mechanical ventilation with heat recovery. It's basically lungs for your home. Stale air goes out, fresh air comes in, and the system swaps the heat so you don't lose energy. You get cleaner, less humid air while keeping most of your hard home warmth. MVHR units also filter stuff as they go. G3 to F6 class filters will snag dust, pollen, and spools. An F7 upgrade will even bag some bacteria. But, and this is key, it isn't pandemic armor. Viruses are smaller than its safety net. And if the air outside is full of soot from, say, an asteroid impact or an alien death ray, it's not enough. For pandemic grade or apocalypse grade air, you're gonna need a HEPA or full CBRN. HEPA is hospital spec. It stops 99.95 to 99.995% of all 0.1 to 0.3 micrometer stuff, dust, bacteria, and most virus aerosols. CBRN is bunker spec. It adds activated carbon and absorbance to kill toxic gases, radioactive particles, and chemical nasties. That level of filtering also means bigger fans and positive pressure in your home so contaminated air doesn't sneak in through gaps. Think space station more than suburban semi. Heat geeks, you're looking good down there. Now there is one time you do want to release CO2, and it's pretty genius. Power's great, but you can't drink volts. When the tap stops, you've got two options. Hope you're above an aquifer and start digging, or turn rainwater into your new energy drink. Rainwater harvesting isn't off-grid fantasy, it's plug and play tech you can buy today. Kits start out under a grand, tie straight into your gutters, and feed loos, washing machines, and gardens for free. Want apocalypse grade hydration? Add a three-stage filter, sediment, carbon, then RO, or reverse osmosis. 
That's molecular level straining. It strips metals, chemicals, and 99.9% .9 of whatever you don't want in your tea. Follow it with UV disinfection, and you're sipping cloud juice cleaner than bottled water. Now for calories. Obviously, a greenhouse or polytunnel is your home's new food battery, storing sunlight as starch. Add a bottled CO2 enrichment kit, the same tech commercial growers use, and plants photosynthesize faster for bigger yields. So, if the climate does collapse, at least your tomatoes won't. Preserve what you grow like an engineer. You can dehydrate food by literally sticking it on the lowest oven temperature, or literally boil food in jars to kill bacteria and safely store it for years. Freeze it, chest freezers are most efficient, and even better if you fill up spare space with bottles of water to hold thermal mass when power dips. If you wanna go next level though, set up a small insulated food store beside your house. Anything from a well-sealed shed to an insulated shipping container. Then use a heat pump to strip heat from that cold store and dump it into your house or hot water, hitting up to 1000% efficiency. Because heat pumps don't make heat, they just move it. That's 10 kilowatts of heating and cooling for every one you use. This isn't prepping, it's systems thinking. Water, heat, air, food, all closing the loop. At that point, your house stops being a consumer and starts acting like a tiny ecosystem. Oh, and don't forget your Starlink, because if civilization does go offline, at least your memes won't. Maybe civilization won't end with a bang. Maybe it will reboot, house by house, inverter by inverter. The apocalypse might be fiction, but what we're building here is the blueprint for independence. One where comfort doesn't depend on pipelines, politics, or luck, just physics, good design, and a bit of prepper flair. If you only do one of these things, get off gas first. Hit heatgeek.com to prep nerd level, but not wallet pain level, while the 7,500 pound prepping grant is still on. And if civilization is still running by the time we get this video out, hit subscribe. Comment your most ridiculous but useful apocalypse upgrade and check out what others have cooked up. Most of this isn't about survival, it's about feeling in control again. And if civilization does collapse, at least your thermostat won't.